now that Christmas is over, the real pain is going to start. Over the next 6 to 12 months, in my opinion, a lot of goods from manufacturers, restaurants, and bricks and mortar retailers is going to be liquidated and then the goods are going to vanish. The businesses are going to vanish. These restaurants will be closing locations or closing altogether. Many bricks and mortar retailers will be closing locations or vanishing altogether. And many manufacturers will be downsizing or automating. And politicians and bureaucrats deserve an absolutely enormous amount of the blame for what has happened during the pandemic with so many small businesses, whether that's gyms, bricks and mortar retailers, restaurants, not even being given the chance to survive. But politicians can intervene, whether that's rules changes, moving the goalposts, or wage and price controls, which are raising minimum wages, which for a business like a restaurant, the margins are already razor thin, raising the minimum wages, which we might see with stagflate tax live. We might see higher wages. We will probably see even higher taxes. We're already seeing that in the UK. We're probably going to see higher taxes in many cities and states in the not too distant future. If voters, a certain block of voters, wants higher wages, then the politicians will respond or the central planners, the bureaucrats will respond that way. However, this is going to really, really hurt small business owners and it may lead to even less jobs. So there might be some employees that get a higher minimum wage, but then there's going to be more businesses that shut down and there's also going to be more businesses switching to automation and this was going on before the pandemic now let's transition to this article from yahoo finance from brian sozi from december 26 2020 after christmas your mall might vanish but it may also be reborn after a brutal year for most malls capped off by week holiday shopping season thanks to the pandemic many that have struggled financially for years may finally vanish in 2021 as their tenants close up shop quote bankruptcies and store closings will accelerate again veteran retail executive jan rogers niffin said in a new missive to clients this week of the roughly 1,000 100 malls left in America, Niffin believes only 278 are viable in the post-pandemic world where online shopping will reign even more supreme. These would be the best of the best malls or A malls as experts call them that are in densely populated areas and target higher income shoppers. The thinning of the herd next year could get ugly. The pandemic has just sped up the day of reckoning for vast stretches of zombie retail real estate. America had, so it was already going to happen, but the pandemic sped it up according to real estate experts, commercial real estate experts. America had a glut of real t- retail space before the pandemic with twice as many square feet dedicated to shopping as any other country in the world retail is oversupplied by six square feet per capita compared to europe according to international council of shopping centers for u.s merchants a new york-based retail trade group about 300 of america's 1100 malls are in distress right now according to john shupp principal at avison young a toronto-based commercial real estate services firm in fact one key player in the mall space succumbed to the inevitable before black friday CBL and Associates Properties, which operated 100 properties across 26 U.S. states, filed for bankruptcy on November 2nd. The company's biggest tenants, such as JCPenney and Asena, filed for bankruptcy in the summer, putting more pressure on CBL's financials. Quote, it's going to be bad. The mall industry and the tenants that are malls came into this already precariously positioned on a knife's edge, and the pandemic shutdown has pushed them over the edge. Department stores will fold. They are vulnerable. They can't go a month or two without sales, said Scott Crow, chief investment officer and portfolio manager of Center Square Investment Management, a Pennsylvania-based investment management firm. So there's a long list in this article of all the retail bankruptcies, and there's a lot of them. Numbers on the aftermath for malls are stunning. In the U.S., 20% to 25% of retail spaces will become vacant in the next few years due to the pandemic, Crow estimates. Half of the malls in America will disappear over time, said Najila Kayem, Senior Vice President of Marketing for Pacific Retail Capital Partners, a California-based retail investment and management company. Quote, a meaningful percent of space will be vacant. In certain instances, those malls that were struggling before may never reopen. The pandemic is an inflection point, bringing together and accelerating the trends we were observing in the industry before.
said Pam Bonaham, Managing Director and Head of Capital Strategies for Bearings Real Estate. The rest of the article is also very interesting, talking about what could potentially go into the malls. Amazon has been buying up a lot of these malls for the last like seven to 10 years now, buying them up for pennies on the dollar near populated areas and then putting distribution centers there. But overall, the pandemic has really benefited, unfortunately, the Amazons, the Walmarts, the Targets, the Costcos, and the large grocery store chains, and the small businesses, the mom and pop places, the restaurants, the bricks and mortar retailers, those places, they're not even being given a chance to survive by politicians. And ultimately, I think what this means over the next couple years, unless the economy actually comes back in a couple years, and I'm not optimistic about that quite yet, is that there's going to be less goods. So there is trillions and trillions more currency units and credit chasing a smaller amount of goods produced. And you now have politicians, whether that's in the UK or many politicians here in the US, talking about permanent universal basic income and MMT. And your people are going to be getting checks and staying at home and not if this does come to fruition and they're not going to be producing anything, which means that ultimately there's not going to be that many goods and there's going to be a lot of currency and credit out there chasing asset prices like Bitcoin and altcoins and all other kinds of crazy asset prices and Robinhood, tra Robinhood trading app stocks and and uh, SPAC, special, special purpose acquisition companies or blank check companies. So this is gonna be stagflationary or heavily inflationary with all this currency and credit chasing less goods and services produced in the economy because people are gonna be paid if we do get universal basic income and MMT to not produce any goods. So that is inflationary or shrinkflation and stagflation or a weird combination of those things. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about before I wrap up this short little video is all the collateral damage from commercial real estate and lack of bricks and mortar retail businesses and restaurants. And those are your real estate investment trusts. And a large investor in commercial real estate is not only real estate investment trusts, some of them, but also these pension funds. And the pension funds are probably gonna need bailouts. And that's why the pension funds are taking all kinds of crazy ridiculous risks with a lot of their quote unquote investments. It's not really investments. These pension funds are stupidly gambling on high upside stuff that is extremely risky. So pension funds, real estate investment trusts, and the large banks like Wells Fargo, some of these large banks could have enormous exposure to commercial real estate in the form of commercial real estate mortgage-backed securities and other real estate loans, commercial real estate loans. And according to a lot of the research I've read, the large US banks have not written off very little at least of these commercial real estate loans and these commercial real estate mortgage-backed securities. So these are a ticking time bomb. It's tough to say on timing wise when these things are gonna happen, but if the rules are gonna change and certain entities like hedge funds and private equity and the large banks are gonna be given rules changes and zero interest rate free loans or currency swaps with other central banks that the Fed can just waive. It's tough to say if any of these too big to fail banks are gonna be allowed to fail. So this is a dangerous environment. If you're looking to short, maybe you have a small little window where Wells Fargo has a really bad couple months and then all of a sudden the rules are changed, Wells Fargo's infused with cash and the Fed comes in and buys all of those commercial real estate mortgage-backed securities at 100 cents on the dollar, or the Fed goes and buys a lot of bills out, a lot of these real estate investment trusts, or Congress changes the bankruptcy laws or the tax write-offs as Congress did for the home builders in 2009, so these real estate investment trusts don't go bankrupt that are tied to shopping malls and commercial real estate. So this is unfortunately the environment we're in where all the rules can be changed very, very quickly and you have to pay attention. And this is the most dangerous for shorts right now because the goal of all these central bankers and central planners and politicians is asset price inflation. Please consider becoming a patron over on my Patreon and chipping in five bucks or more per month so that way I can continue to do my research and make unique content and be able to make a living.
because with my YouTube channel, my Google AdWords revenues have collapsed almost to zero. My YouTube channel subscribers have stopped growing in the last nine months. There's no growth there. And my live stream shows have been shut down and YouTube tech support is giving me all types of excuses claiming that they did not put a strike in my account, even though I can't edit the title for a live stream show. I cannot turn monetization back on. I cannot even turn live chat back on. That's how bad things are with the live stream show. I have almost 150 and hopefully soon it will be over 150 unique pieces of content behind the paywall on Patreon in terms of well-researched articles. Some of the articles have taken me many, many hours to produce for lots of different topics about gold miners, silver miners, precious metal royalty and streaming companies, a lot of articles about the oil industry and other commodity industries, also global macro related articles. There's also audio podcasts and a lot of stock charts and technical analysis there too. And while you are getting unique content, if I go over 1,200 patrons and I stay there, I will sign up for another live streaming service just for patrons. So I will make this pledge, I will make this promise. If I go over 1,200 patrons and I stay there, so if I drop below 1,200 patrons, the promise is not going to stay. I have to stay at 1,200 patrons and stay there. I will start to do live stream shows just for patrons behind the paywall there. It will require additional capital. I will have to sign up. I think it's 100 bucks a month for another service there to integrate with Patreon to sign up there and integrate. So that will be an additional added bonus for patrons if you want to take me up on that. But please chip in if you can as YouTube is basically trying to make this impossible for me to grow my channel or to make a living from making content.